Hi, thank you for tuning in to Real Life Real Estate with Suzanne Prezio. I'm Suzanne Prezio. My guest today is Rich Dowd with Win Home Inspections. Hi, Rich. Hi, Suzanne. Nice to finally get to meet you again. <laughs> yes, since last week. Uh, Rich is a home inspector, as I mentioned, and we have done many, many inspections. To, well, he has done them, and I have, I have tagged along over uh, the last... 12 years. Yep. You, you actually were the home inspector at my very first home inspection. And I remember it vividly because I couldn't get the sunroom door locked and you laughed at me and said, some realtor you are, you can't, can't use key, but you uh, did have kind words for me. So I was you polite about it. You, you were, you were. Playful is the word. Um, so Rich, wh what's your background? So I've been doing home inspections for 15 years, um, all in the Capital District, up north, out west. Um, before home inspections, I did inspections and consulting work for 30 years in the restaurant business. Um, we did inspections on restaurants and everything. So, and you know, I did, um, I worked for a, a construction company for a while when I was younger to learn some background on construction and everything else. But mostly it's been doing inspections in two different industries. Now, if memory serves, you you had to do a lot of overseas travel for that, didn't Correct. you? Yep. So you've, you've seen it. Yeah, we did. Um, I went over to um, the Middle East, South Africa. Um, we did a lot of consulting down there. So that was that was a unique trip. That's, uh, that's good stuff. Um, home inspection. It, you're licensed, correct? Correct. Which means? In New York State, if you want to be a home inspector, you have to take the New York State licensing course. Um, you have to, I think it's 16 hours for the course and then you have to spend 40 hours with an experienced home inspector. Um, it, it'll take you then, it'll take you a year or so to get your footing on it, but you have to be licensed and you have to have insurance to be able to do home inspections in New York State. Uh, not every state does licensing, so, um, but New York State, I think, is one of the 10 across the country that do it. Oh, really? Okay. Uh, um, now there's continuing ed, obviously. Correct. Yep, um, home inspectors have to do 12 hours a year in continuous ed, um, so that you're keeping up on all the new construction codes and, and keeping you educated so that you, you stay on top of everything. Now, is it anything that's, that's uh, do you all take the same classes? What I'm getting at is I know as a realtor, I have to take ethics, I have to take fair housing, but then I can choose to delve into whatever course I want, whether it be investment properties or green properties. I, I have a menu from which I may choose. Are you mandated, does everybody take the same? No, the um, New York State has approved teaching courses. There's companies, you can't do it online. Um, you have to be a, go through an approved um, trainer or a class that's been approved by New York State. Um, you can take whatever class you want based as long as it's, in, it's certified by New York State. So if I want to take an electrical course every year as a refresher, I can do that. They don't dictate what ones you take, it's just as long as they've been certified by the state so that everybody is getting the same type of classes that they've been approved. Yep. Good, good. Uh, how many years have, have you been doing this? Fifteen. 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 About so. 14,000 home inspections. Wow. Okay, and I know all all kinds, all yep. areas, all Absolutely. sizes, because we've we've pretty much done them all together. Yep. Uh, what changes have you seen in the industry over the last fifteen years? Well, everything is on the internet. So and everything everything is on the internet. <laughs> so if you're going to look at hiring home inspectors, you want to make sure that they have experience, they have insurance, um, they have a good reference for people. Um, there's a lot of fly-by-night guys that are doing, you know, $200 a, a trip, but don't have the experience. But the, the industry has changed a lot because there's so many national companies now that are offering inspections. But the actual inspections are all done online, so it's quicker. Um, you don't have to wait a week for your report. Mostly everybody's doing pictures, so everybody, you get a picture of whatever the house is. Um, so it's, it's really broad, the industry has really come up to the 20th century so it's quicker and you get the results the same day in most cases. Um, so it's very quick, you know, you get your results quick. Double-edged sword with the consumer as far as a little bit of information can sometimes be dangerous? Yep, I mean, um, you have to weed through home inspections. You're gonna get a book that has a lot of boilerplate things in it. 
um, you need to take some of that for with a grain of salt because the summaries usually are the critical ones and those are the ones you got to concentrate on. You can't try to fix everything and you, you get too much information, you'll be overwhelmed and it'll discourage you from buying a house yeah. when not all of them are critical. You really want to make sure you talk to the, to the inspector to make sure what the really important ones that he should be concentrating on. Um, don't, you know, don't get hung up on the little things. It's the big stuff that you got to worry about. And sometimes the big things are, I don't want to say little things, but that's not, but you know, you have something like radon, which is fixable. It's completely fixable. And we've seen people say, oh, no, there's radon. And, and, and that's it because they go on the internet and they read everything. And sometimes that's not such a great thing. No, you want to make sure that, um, and, and your agent, your real estate agent is going to help you weed through some of that, and then the home inspector. Um, everything is fixable in the house. You just want to make sure that you understand the cost that's going to cost you to fix it, and the maintenance you have to do to keep it from coming back, and just educate yourself on all that before you get um, turning down the deal because of something like a radon. All of that stuff is fixable. It just you just got to find out who's going to pay for it. Uh, and that you'll work through with your attorney and the real estate agents. Right, right, which which we'll touch on mold in a little while because the, you know those laws have have changed greatly with how it's handled, how it's assessed, how it's uh, determined that it, it is and who, who is going to handle that. Um, the um, I'm losing my train of thought now. Um, I'll, I'll ask one other question before we go to a break. Sometimes I have a buyer who wants to bring in an engineer. What are your thoughts on that? Um, it depends on the situation. If, if it's an engineer, they're going to give you a black and white answer. There's no gray area. Um, they're very expensive. and. I would tell you to try to get through the inspection first and let the home inspector look at it. And then if it's that severe and that necessity, the inspector is going to recommend something, another person to look at it anyway. I would start with your inspector first because the engineer is going to give you um, a, a concrete, if is it good or bad or if it's structurally af affecting it. But you really want to get the inspector to look at it first and then you might not need to spend $500 on an engineer. You could use a contractor who can give you cost and actually how long it's going to take to repair it and all that before you do the engineer. Because your job as the home inspector is to inspect the home. If you find any one thing that is more than $1,500, not a bunch of things added together, but any one thing, then you'll recommend to the buyer that they bring in an expert? Is that the word that you would Absolutely. use? Okay. Or, or are they uh, a contractor? So if we find that the roof is bad and needs to be replaced, that would be over 1500 We would then recommend that your agent get you a couple of roofers to come over and evaluate it and give you a cost of what that's going to cost to replace. If it's over 1500 then you can go back to the sellers and try to renegotiate for that roof. Uh, and that would be anything that's over 1500 that's a structural issue. Mm -hmm. So your primary role is to uh, detect the issue. Correct. And then it's outsourced. Yep. Uh, yep. Which keeps everybody objective. Absolutely. Uh, um, and the sellers will have the right to bring their own person in too at the same time. Um, if you think the roof is bad, they're going to bring their roofer in and give a quote. So you, you have to get a realistic um, estimate so that you're all in the same ballpark. Exactly. We're going to take our first break, and then we're going to come back and talk about, well, I'm going to keep you in suspense. You are listening to Talk WWSC 93.1 FM AM 1450. We'll be back with Rich Dowd with Win Home Inspections. All right, we're back with Rich Dowd with Win Home Inspection. If you have any questions for Rich, you can go to suzanneprezio.com. It's S-U-Z-A-N-N-E-P-R-E-Z-I-O.com and scroll down to email me and just send me your question and I will get it to Rich and he will definitely follow up with you, uh, as with any of our guests. Um, 
So, Rich, one thing we're both on the same page about, and I cannot say enough about the importance of it, is pre-inspections. Uh, I, I, that's something I really push my sellers to do because it's better to know what, what you have going on, whether or not you even choose to repair it. But I, I'd like you to talk about a pre-inspection, what it is, what it entails, and why it's important. Okay. So when you're ready to sell your house, you should try to get a pre-inspection done before you put it on the market and before you're taking pictures and getting ready to sell it. Um, it's critical because we're going to go through and we're going to look for all those big $1,500 items that the buyer's home inspector will find and try to renegotiate with you. If you can take care of those things beforehand or make a decision on either selling as is or just leaving it alone or fixing it, you'll know ahead of time so you don't get surprises after the home inspection. Um, I'll give you an example. We find mold in the attics in 30% of the homes. Um, you get a first-time home buyer who comes in and they find out that you have mold in the house. They go to the internet, they read it, they find out that mold's bad, and they end up pulling out of the deal because of a mold issue, which if it was taken care of before it was put on the market, you'd have all the warranties and all taken care of, and then there's a less chance that those people would pull out. You've already addressed it and you fixed it. Um, you will save yourself so much time and effort and energy if you do it ahead of time. And money. And money, absolutely. And you know, if you find an issue with a furnace, you want to have your guy take a look at the furnace versus the home inspector bringing in somebody that they know for the buyer, mm -hmm. and now the issue could be bigger than it really is based on you know, whatever the item is. But we would strongly recommend them. It goes so much smoother. Um, you, we work on things that will help you sell the house better, you know, give you ideas about what to paint, not to paint, areas that you should fix and not to fix. Um, if it's something critical and you don't have the money, then it's something that your agent can then list it as being disclosed so that they can't come back to you and try to get money out of you because you've disclosed it. Right, or or we can just take the elephant out of the room and say, hey, we, kn we know we need a new roof. So uh, present your offer accordingly with that factored in. Absolutely, so well, then you don't have to put the money out Right, if you don't have it, right, and you're still selling your house, and you can still hopefully make a profit on it. At right, that point. right, absolutely. Because you know you don't want to you don't want to get three weeks into the process and have the transaction fall through, yep. because then you know then a property can become stigmatized. Well, why is it back on the market? I wonder what's wrong with it. I just, in that if if you're forthcoming with it, um, and and also I mean, I've had people who have used the pre-inspection report in lieu of their own inspection. Correct. Which saves them a couple of hundred dollars. Absolutely. If they can, um, if, if the seller agrees to present it to them and the buyer decides not to spend the 500 bucks on a home inspection, um, they have the same warranties and same guarantees from that home inspector. He starts a new contract with them. As long as the seller gives you permission, then it saves everybody a headache. You don't have three people looking at the house with three different opinions, you got one, and you're all working together to get the deal done good, you know, without having to um, um, cost you more money to do all the other inspections and everything. So pre-sales are the, one of the best advantages for a seller to get the, the deal to go smoothly. Absolutely. Now, now your pre-inspection does not. My question is, is is twofold here. Um, there are some things your pre-inspection does not cover it that your regular inspection would correct and I, I if I'm correct you do not inspect chimneys ever that's never part of your correct regular inspection and, and uh, septic is not something you inspect yep. but you do well Water, water flow, water quality. Okay, Absolutely. so you want to touch on those two subjects? Yeah, so um, if you have a, a house that you have a well, we would recommend that you get a water sample done before you put it on the market. If it water comes back ahead with bacteria... So you drinking out of the hose is no longer... Absolutely any. not. That'd be good. <laughs> Which, a week later, he's still alive? Okay. Yeah, there's a little bit of sulfur. <laughs> but, um, so you want to do the water test before you put it on the market. So if it does come back with bacteria or E. coli or something, you can treat it. And so when you do get the home inspection, 
they're going to do a test anyway, and then it doesn't slow the process down. Um, most home inspectors will not do chimney inspections. You really want to get a level two chimney guy to in there with a camera to make sure that there's no cracks. Chimneys are very expensive. If the flu is bad, it could be $2,000. Oh, so yeah. you want to make sure that that's a big one that you take care of so they're not bringing in their own person. Um, and then it's now $5,000 because they're going to do a lot of extra things on it. So, now, I'm sorry, level two. I've never heard that expression. What does that mean? It's just the way they, they have different certifications. So the level two chimney guy that, that inspects chimneys will use a camera. Uh, a level one guy might not. Um, they're not required to. They do chimney sweeps, you know, but a level two chimney company will always, in most cases, will use a camera. And the cameras get to see all the way up. Um, they have to clean it first to get the creosol out, and then they can see if there's any cracks or if it's installed correctly and everything. Too many chimney fires happen because you haven't cleaned it or if you have a crack. So you want to make sure you inspect it with the, the right person. Mm -hmm. okay? okay. But um, as a pre-inspection, yeah. Most home inspectors won't do like appliances and all that. All those things, you'll have to just make sure that they're working at the day of the inspection. We're looking for all those big $1,500 items that would be big surprises for you so that they'll try to renegotiate at the, you know, at the, the home inspection. Does your pre-inspection, forgive me because I don't remember, surprise, surprise, does your pre-inspection, uh, do you do a pest inspection at that time? Only if they require it, but you know, if we're doing, we're looking at all those areas. A lot of times, I'll if I see something, I'll let them know and then um, get them to have somebody treat it, or they can treat it themselves. If they want to pass a full pest inspection, it's it's additional fee in most cases. Okay. And then if they wanted a rate on, it would be an additional fee. Okay. But the pre inspections are cheaper than a normal inspection because we're not doing every single window, all the appliances, their washer and dryers, and all that. We do just all the big stuff that would be 1500 or more. I've gone to regular home inspections where they have not checked the appliances. That's something that not every home inspector does, yeah, so pat yourself on the back for that one. Yeah, it's not part of the national standards or New York standards. They don't have to, we don't have to check appliances. We do it as a courtesy, just so you know that it works, um, so you don't get a surprise that the dishwasher is leaking the day you move in. Right, you know? right. But, uh, absolutely. <laughs> and we know that stuff happens, too. Absolutely. Uh, <clears throat> Never forget the water heater that died while we were at the closing. And you had said you're going to want to replace that. So. It was 16 years old, if yeah. I remember. Yeah. Yep. So, uh, yeah, uh, it was a good call on your part. Um, okay, we are going to take another break. We are here with Rich Dowd of Win Home Inspections. You're listening to Talk WWSC 93.1 FM, AM 1450. All right, we're back with Real Life Real Estate with Suzanne Prezio, and my industry expert today is Rich Dowd with Win Home Inspections. Rich, do you have guidelines if you, because you'll say to me when I show up at a, a an inspection, you'll ask me for the property condition disclosure, which uh, for our listeners who aren't familiar with that, property condition disclosure is something that the sellers fill out it just tells about the house, any known defects, they have to disclose on that. Or they can opt not to fill it out and just pay $500. In the event that it's an estate, they don't have to fill it out because they haven't lived in the house, they have no knowledge of it. But when I show up at a home inspection, I shouldn't say show up when I arrive, I always give you that so you can look it over, know if there's anything you should, of which you should be aware. And you'll ask me what kind of loan it is, if it's VA, FHA, conventional. Are there certain things that you must, boxes you must check off depending on the type of loan the consumer is, is getting? Yeah, so if you were doing a conventional mortgage, um, they typically don't require you to do really, you don't even have to do inspections if you didn't want. I don't recommend that, you really should do them. They're not required to do a pest inspection or radon, water flow or water quality, typically if it's a conventional or a convention mortgage. If it's FHA, VA, or USDA, they have um, guidelines where they want you to do a pest inspection in most cases. They want specific water samples for water, like lead, nitrates, coliform, E. coli. So any of those FHA, VA, or USDA loans, you want to check with your lender to find out what inspections you're gonna need to do when you do your inspections. 
and some of those will be costly, the water samples. It starts to add up, so you wanna clarify that and make sure to see if you need to do those or not. Um, and it's critical, I would still do a pest inspection, I would definitely do a water sample oh, yeah. and water flow. Um, you don't wanna find out the well can't keep up if you got five people living in the house. So it's critical to check with your lender, they can give you direction of what you need. You wanna to try to do that ahead of time because some of those tests take two to three weeks to get back and you will be out of your um, inspection period. You usually have the 10 days. So you wanna clarify that before you get to the home inspection. And, and again, it really is important to have a knowledgeable seasoned home inspector because you can manipulate those, those well tests as far as you know, don't shower at home for two weeks and then of course your well is gonna be full. So uh, a good home inspector is, is going to pick up on things like that. Yep. Uh, so, touching on some things, you know, I've, I've sold a lot of houses over the last 12 years, and I find that there are certain concerns that buyers consistently have, and I'd like your opinion on them. Windows. We'll go and we'll look at a house, and my, my buyers will say, oh, this needs new windows. We have to replace the windows. What are your thoughts on that? I would say the first thing I would, I would look at is determine how long you think you're gonna be in the house. Um, the windows are gonna save you money on energy, uh, but they're gonna cost you between two and $400 a window, depending on what kind and what brand that you buy. If you're gonna be in that house for a 10 year period, you should try to do the windows earlier than later because you're gonna get money back in your energy bill um, as you go along. If it's only going to be a three to four year plan for you to live in that house, you're probably not going to get your money back in energy savings. You'll get it back in you know, warmer rooms and it'll be more convenient, they'll work better and all that. Um, but people won't go in and buy that house because it has good windows or not. Uh, but it, the energy savings will be tremendous if you do it and you're there 10 years. You'll get your money back on the savings just from the window, the heat loss that you would have with the older windows. So windows are, they're expensive. You wanna do your education, you know, do be educated on what ones you want. Um, there's a lot of, um, National Grid has some rebates for energy saving things, for windows, uh, insulation, boilers, any of that kind of stuff. You should really research it and you could get some energy savings from National Grid, depending on what it is. Um, you have to go through and get an energy survey from them and they can help you with that. So, so, if I'm understanding you, it's gonna take about eight to 10 years to recoup your money? Depending on how much you spend. The average is five to eight on rebates or on uh, window, if you replace your windows to save your money and energy, yep. Okay. So if you're only gonna be there three or four years, you really won't get your money. You'll get it back on convenience and warmth, but you won't get it back for energy. Okay. Uh, it's too expensive, especially if you have 30 windows or 20 windows. Okay, yeah. all right. Yep. Now I'm going to mention, and I'm sure we're going to have to take a break before, I mean, we've got a little time, but I'm sure you can go on and on and on with this, this subject. The basement. Whenever I show homes, my buyers, it just becomes ingrained in their brain. First thing I'll say to them when we walk in the house, I'll be in the basement. It's the first place I look because if we have a bad basement, it doesn't matter if Rob Lowe is in that house, we're, it's just not a good idea. Um, depending on the uh, viewpoint of the buyer. Some buyers obviously are willing to tackle anything. Others will just, as soon as they detect anything going on in the basement, they're out. So one thing that I notice is uh, efflorescence. Correct. That's that fuzzy stuff on basement walls yep people people don't know what it is sometimes they think it's mold sometimes it's just what is that um, your concrete block when you have uh, a basement that's not finished and you see that white everescence it's basically calcium you have water on the other side of the wall it's trying to come through your your foundation that is the reaction to the lime and everything in the in the block and it's not it's not mold it's just, it just needs to be cleaned off. It's the chemical reaction from the block with the water causing calcium. So you go in, you clean it off, and then you can dry lock those walls with a moisture paint, and that will help stop that effervescence from growing uh, in the basement. Um, 
If you have a finished wall, then it's a little bit more difficult. You're not gonna be able to see any kind of water damage or if you have any of that. But if you see a lot of that, it's nothing to worry about. It's just something you need to clean and then seal. Doesn't mean you have a wet basement. It just means you have, you know, you could probably do gutters, make sure the ground is graded outside away from the house. We see a lot of water issues because people don't have gutters. And if they do have a gutter, their gutter is dumping out right next to the foundation versus going away from the house. Mm -hmm. So the water is taken away and down and down the street or out toward the, the back of the house. Or it's clogged. Yep. Clean your gutters every year, every fall. Uh, you can buy gutter guards to cover that so you don't have to get up on a ladder every fall. Uh, they have some inexpensive ones you could do. But uh, yeah. the biggest issues we find typically are in the houses in the basement. And the biggest fear is usually water. Um, gutters help, dehumidifiers help. They'll stop mold from growing on the wood. Uh, and that will take that musty smell out uh, if you have a dehumidifier running 24 hours a day, uh, especially in the summer. Sump pumps. I have had more buyers say to me, oh, it has a sump pump. Nope, I don't want to buy a house with a sump pump. My opinion on that, and I'm just a realtor, I am not a home inspector, is you are better off having a sump pump because if you need it and you don't have it, I, act, I actually have a hydraulic sump pump. I have a regular sump pump and then I have, a, if my insurance company's looking, and I have a hydraulic pump as a backup because if your power goes out, it doesn't matter if you have a sump pump. But right. what, what are your thoughts on that? Sump pumps are, are designed to protect your basement. There's nothing wrong with them. They are designed to correct any water issues. Um, I'll give an example. In January, when we get that 70 degree thaw like we did this year, mm -hmm. the two feet of snow melted, the ground's frozen, the water's got no place to go, so what happens is it gets puts pressure on your basement. It's probably a one-time thing, it's not a, something that happens all the time, but if you have a sump pump at that point, that protects your $10,000 finished basement you just did, right. and it protects you against it. I would not, I would prefer to have a sump pump in my basement knowing that it's there protecting me. So if, it, if something ever did happen, I'm protected and I'm not going to ruin my basement. Yeah, and yeah. case in point, even with new construction, Absolutely. I don't care if you're building a 200000 or a $2 million home, even with all the new technology, what we now know with PVC, uh, perimeter piping and such, builders still put a sump pit in the home. Yep. So, uh, and as, you know, key phrase, one time we just need that one thaw and that's enough to make for a bad day because Absolutely. now your basement is flooded um, so what what basements you know we have rules and there's reasons we have rules and we have code enforcement and we have checks and balances because I know your inspections you cannot do what we would call an invasive inspection. You can't tear down walls. You can't remove paneling. You can't even move things to go into a space. Uh, understandably so. How does a consumer protect themselves when they buy a home that has a finished basement? So they know what's behind those walls truly is up to code and, and they're not putting their family in harm's way. Well, one of the things, if the biggest culprit in basements is water. That's the number one thing. If it's a finished basement, unless somebody has just painted it, and you can tell if it's old paint or if it's paneling, the biggest culprit, you're going to see water stains. So if you know that that basement's been wet, you're going to know, you're going to hear the sump pump running consistently when you're there, if they have a high water table. And you're going to see staining in the baseboards and the carpet. Unless the homeowner went and painted and replaced all the carpet within the last couple months, mm -hmm. you're going to see that there's a big issue in that basement, mm -hmm. especially if it's an older home. If they have paneling, paneling has been around for a oh, long time. Yes, yes. Paneling, when it gets wet, it just deteriorates at the bottom. Yes. So that's when you go looking at these houses when, before you put an offer in, you're just looking at them. Look for the signs in the basement, in the in the sheetrock, at the base, the carpets, smell of musty. That'll tell you, you know, if it's a real wet basement, you'll know. Make sure they have gutters outside. 
um, that'll give you a you know a headache or a, a sign that it is going to be an issue or not. Mm -hmm. um, and then most of your real estate agents know the areas that are have uh, wide high water tables and have bad basements um, that are going to be wet. And then you're going to have to. There's nothing wrong with them. It's all fixable. You can maintain it with the sump pump and dehumidifiers and gutters. It all can be fixed. You just want to look at that when you're looking at these homes so that you can make the right decision. Exactly. Okay. All right, we're going to take another break. You're listening to Talk WWSC 93.1 FM AM 1450. We'll be right back. Okay. So... So we only have one more to do, right? Yep. Is that right? Was it? That was four, wasn't it, already? Did we already do four? I think so. So we went into the fifth one? I don't know. All right, I want to touch on basements a little bit more in uh, the furnace. Sometimes you see all the furnaces in it. How long are they supposed to be? You know, I mean, Mine was an energy efficient, but it wasn't going anywhere. Nope. Um, you could talk about furnaces. And I want to talk about board walls. Mm -hmm. What that means. I want to ask what the most unusual thing you've ever seen is. Oh, Are you gosh. comfortable talking about that? I don't have to think about that. <laughs> um, most unusual. Um, and then I guess I'll ask what something you consistently see homeowners neglect that they really should be focusing on. And yeah. that could be vegetation away from the house. Yep. You know, you could, again, like my husband did not want gutters. Did not want gutters. Thought it was the biggest waste of money. And we've seen that much water damage. Oh, it's, you know. it's nuts. You gotta have gutters. Yeah. I, I, well, I got them. Um, so, I want to see how bad this has dried because I'm, I got caught in the rain, so now it's going to turn into, like I said, a bad Marshall Clark marker. So, uh, my hair was pin straight until I had Alexander. Pin straight. So we've got one more segment to do. We'll go until uh, 10 after. Ready? Yeah. All right, we're back with Rich Dowd for our final segment of Real Life Real Estate with Suzanne Prezio. Rich is a home inspector with Wynn Home Inspection. Staying in the basement. <laughs> Bold walls. What is that? The last time you showed me bold walls, there was also a snake in the basement. Absolutely. So I wasn't Actually, really listening. Actually, two snakes. snakes. Yes. One was dead. Yes. Was dead. You want to see? I was like a gazelle running up those stairs. That poor homeowner got pushed right out of the way. <laughs> hey, man. You know what? Toddlers and, and uh, you know, I did not care who I had to push. There was a snake down there. So bold walls, um, it's typically in homes that have concrete block. We don't typically see a bowed, a bowed wall in poured concrete. What it is, is there's, um, it's ice pressure from the outside pushing in on those walls. And we see it probably in three out of every 10 homes that have concrete block. Um, I will tell you, typically those homes have no gutters. You have all that water dumping off the roof, putting that extra pressure on the, on the walls. Um, nothing to worry about as long as they're, they're minor bows. If that gap at the bow line is you know an inch to two inches, you would need to get a, um, a concrete foundation person over there to, they can put up seams, they can put up steel poles to protect it and to stop it from, from actually bowing. Um, if the bow is too bad, then they would have to rebuild the wall. They could put a wall right in front of it. But a, a minor one is not a big issue if it's less than an inch. Usually it's not too bad at that point. It's just from um, ice pressure and just pressure pushing on that wall from the outside. They didn't pack the ground enough um, on the outside, um, and it's just making the heat, making that wall heave inside versus standing straight up. Um, nothing to be concerned about. It can be fixed. It's something that your inspector can make recommendations and getting you a foundation person over there to give you some rec recommendations and cost. Can that sometimes happen if the driveway is not pitched the right Could way, be. all that runoff? Yep, you got water and ice running toward the house, a deck. Um, it just adds to that ice heaves that are pushing in that pressure onto those concrete blocks. Okay. Absolutely. All yep. right. The furnace. Oftentimes, buyers will say, oh, that furnace is real. They're going to need a new furnace. And the seller will say, there's nothing wrong with that furnace. It's, 
it's fine. You get it serviced every year. It's, it, there's no issue here. I get that the energy efficiency might be completely different than a new furnace, but when, when does a furnace need to be, like, when would you fail one on an inspection? So if it's an old forced air furnace, um, you know, they last 30 years. Um, it's critical that you do servicing every year. Um, some people will tell you not to do a service on a forced air system because mm -hmm. it's gas. I would strongly recommend you want somebody opening that up every year and they check for gas leaks and carbon monoxide leaks. They look in the heat exchanger to make sure the heat exchanger is not cracked. Um, we do a carbon monoxide test on it. If the heat exchanger is cracked, you wouldn't see that. And we're not yeah. allowed to take it apart, but we use a carbon monoxide tester. If it's given off carbon monoxide, that's a good sign that that heat exchanger is cracked and the furnace will need to be replaced. We've seen 40-year-old furnaces that don't have any carbon monoxide, um, and the furnace will work as long as it's, it's gonna cost you more to continue to fix it than it would be for a new one. It's like your car, if you're spending 500 bucks a month on repairs, it's probably time you should really start looking at a new car because that you could get a lease payment for cheaper than that and you get a brand new car. Same thing with the furnace. If you have to spend $2,000 a year on repairs, it's time to get rid of it. Um, not counting the money you'll save in efficiencies because of the new ones are all 92% versus 82%. Mm -hmm. You'll save a money every month versus spending the money on repairs. So typically if the furnace is really going, it's gonna give off carbon monoxide, it's going to be making sounds, it's not exhausting correctly. Um, that's the time you get a, an HVAC person over there to take it apart and really give you a, a, an inside look of what's going on inside. If you need to replace it or can you last a couple more years. So probably a good idea to have the furnace serviced before the home goes on the market. Absolutely, okay. absolutely. All right. Same thing with your hot water tank, have them look at that. Um, I will say that one of the biggest thing homeowners don't do is if we do 10 inspections a week, eight out of every 10 homes will not have their furnace serviced or their AC. So, really? and the, a furnace is $4,500, an AC is 3,000, and you're not having somebody open it up and inspect it. Um, it, you will see 10 years where nobody's even looked at it, and there'll be issues. It's like your car, if you don't change your oil, you're gonna end up having problems with that motor. So you really want somebody, it averages between $145 and $185 to have it serviced every September. Um, Money well spent. Absolutely. Yep. Yes. Uh, so you started to delve into what is something you consistently see homeowners unknowingly neglect that comes back to be a, a problem? One being obviously furnace, or furnace maintenance. What, what other things? Um, the furnace is the biggest one, and then people um, don't cut their trees. They put these trees in when the house was built. They were two feet tall. Now they're overhanging their roofs. They're overhanging their house. They never cut their vegetation back. Um, it causes moss and algae on the roofs, which cut the life down on the shingles. So you, can, you need to keep up on trimming those bushes. Trees are wonderful, but they're wonderful in the forest, not around your house. Um, if you continue to do that, then if you keep up on it, you won't have to spend thousands of having tree limbs cut and everything else. You do a little bit each year, um, and that'll protect your foundation because you're drying the foundation out. You're not having all moss and algae growing on all the parts of the house, the siding and everything. Um, that's probably the second biggest thing people don't do is maintain their shrubbery outside, um, and besides the furnace and the AC. Those are the two big ones, I would say. Uh, and then you should treat for termites and carpenterians. I mean, you do maintenance on it. You spray, you can do it yourself. Do it on a yearly basis mm -hmm. as preventive maintenance so that if your neighbors are spraying with a professional company, um, those ants and termites want to go somewhere. Um, and if you do preventive maintenance, that should keep you from having pests getting in. Okay. All right. That makes sense that they need to find somewhere to live and they're going to go to the home that's not been treated. Correct. Um, I, I would also say just from a resale point of view, curb appeal, exterior maintenance such as paint. When we see these porches that haven't been painted in 15 years, now they're 
instead of dealing with having to just buy a you know seventy dollar gallon of paint, now they're replacing boards or worse. Correct. So um, paint is crucial. Um, the other yeah. thing with the paint is if you're doing an FHA loan or a VA loan, one of their requirements is there can't be any peeling paint. And um, you have to have railings on your decks and the boards can't be ruined. So if you're going to sell your house, you want to make sure that you address that because if you do get an FHA buyer, it'll become an issue, especially if you're selling in the winter. Mm -hmm. You can't paint in the winter, so it right. ends up putting money in escrow. Uh, and it causes issues with their loan, and then it slows the process down. Right. Um, so it's critical that you get it, keep everything painted or get it painted before you put it on the market as much as you can. And then make sure you have railings in all the spots that you're supposed to have railings. And no broken glass. Absolutely, no broken glass. As long as we're talking FHA, head and shoulder inspections in attics. Yes. Um, one of the biggest culprits we find in the attics is mold. Um, and that mold is from poor ventilation. You had a roof leak you didn't fix. Um, I would tell you, before you put it on the market, stick your head up in that attic, take some pictures, text it to your agent, or text it to a home inspector, have them look at it, so that that process slows everything down by at least a couple weeks, because you have to get a mold person over there to do an assessment on it and then get an estimate to clean it. And we're going to talk about that on our next yep. program because we're going to have Paul Pinkins, uh, my sponsor from Edgeco Environmental. Paul's going to come in with Rich, and they're going to talk about mold. Uh, but if there is no attic access, which we have seen, yep. right? Which I, I think you're just giving me a hard time. Oh, Suzanne, where's the attic? Yep. Sometimes we really don't have an access. I, I will tell you, a lot of agents will write it in their contract that the seller give access to the attic because um, then if you don't if you don't insist on it at that point when you go to sell it that could be an issue if they require it and then you open it up and there is mold now you're the one that's paying for that mold versus um, the person that's selling the house and not only that paying to have the hole cut in the ceiling yep. and then to have it either patched or prettied up so now you can leave that patch access yep. uh, very informative, uh, and I know you're a jokester and you have a sense of humor, and that's why we work well together, because we might as well have fun, too. What? I know you've seen some stuff. I mean, come on. You've, you've, you've inspected how many homes? What's one of the most unusual things that you have ever seen, I would besides say, a snake? <laughs> I will say probably one of the craziest stuff we see from people is what they do with electricity. People go on HVTV, and they go on YouTube, and they see... A lot of times people think they can go do it themselves. Yeah. We went into a house, it was an older house, and there was a shower. We opened up the shower door, and the light switch for the light in the, in the, in the shower was inside the shower. So that when you're standing in the shower, oh, there's a light God. switch. And I mean, you talk about suicide. I mean, but that was probably, I gotta imagine, one of the, the craziest things we've ever seen. I've seen light bulb, light, old light hangings in showers where the light bulb is hanging in the shower. Um, I don't know how people haven't killed themselves, but it's, that, that's probably most, the most unique one, I would say. That, you know what, and while we're on the topic of electricity, uh, Federal Pacific boxes. Yep. No longer allowed. So if you're gonna list your house, um, you go into your garage, and it's like that 30-year-old home, 25, 30-year-old home, um, if they're labeled a Federal Pacific box, those um, that company went bankrupt, and they're about you know twelve hundred to fifteen hundred dollars to replace. They're a major safety issue, so that's something that your pre-inspection would determine, and then you would recommend to, we would recommend that you replace it because it's a major safety issue. Uh, the breakers don't trip; they catch on fire, they fall out, um, and every home inspector is aware of it, and they're going to call it out. So you're better off trying to replace it ahead of time, or you disclose it that it's there so that the buyer knows, you know, that you know it's there, and then you're going to adjust your uh, your listing accordingly. Uh, most people will fix it though. It's about twelve hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. Or if you have a home inspector who doesn't catch it, Paul Pinkins, uh, then you could get right to where the home insurance uh, carrier comes in days before. 
looks at the electrical box. A lot of them are carburing it now. And so. says, oh, no, you need a whole new electrical system. And now the cool is in your tailbone. So, Perfect. Rich, thank you. So yeah. informative. Thank you. Next week, we're going to have Rich Dowd and Paul Pinkins from Edgeco Environmental talking about the changes in the mold laws and how their two roles overlap. So thank you, Rich. If you have any questions for Rich, SuzannePrezio.com. And thanks, Suzanne. You're very you welcome. You got to fix your hair; it's all wet. Uh, it's it's a mess. You were very well behaved. I appreciate <laughs> that.